congratulations, you're gonna be purchasing the Safe Rack system and you're watching videos like this one so that way you can get an idea about installation. Because there's only three questions I want you to ask yourself. Question number one, if you have no idea, never done an installation of something like this before, please, please, please consider doing the $125 installation per rack when it comes to installing this because you're going to have to trust yourself that you're going to be putting this 100 pound rack with approximately 300 to 600 pounds of stuff in, you know, above it, above your car, above your garage door opener, and more importantly, above a person if they're walking underneath it, then that is a very big deal. I would only think and ask and implore that you consider that when you're about to do this installation. Two, how low can you go? How low are you going to be going when it comes to this? And uh, embarrassingly, I didn't really calculate properly because what I did was I opened the garage door and I basically judged, oh, it's about two inches, you know, I, I can do that. <clears throat> yeah, I forgot that the first panel actually raises above the railing. And because of that, I hit the rack all the way at the end, which then forced me to take the whole damn thing down raise it up and then put it all back together again. Yeah, I don't want you to do that. So the answer is how low can you go? As low as the T-rail of your garage door opener. The lowest this thing is, is the lowest this can be. And the truth is, is that you want this to be just even a little bit higher than that T-rail to guarantee that you won't have any issues. So there you go. This goes as low as the T-rail and maybe just for smidgen purposes, go about half an inch higher, okay? That way you won't have problems. Third thing, if you can put this anywhere other than above your garage door, I would suggest it only, only if hooks are important to you. If the hooks are important to you because that was a great sales point, which was until I realized once you open the garage door, yeah, those hooks are totally useless. <laughs> Yeah, 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 in this case, you can see that I have the hooks all over here at this corner, and the reason why is because this is where the garage door stops. And I put my motorcycle over here, but if you have a car, if you have anything that will get in the way of these things, then these hooks are totally, I mean, you don't need them. But if the hooks are not important, don't worry about that so much. The installation of this is not affected when it comes above your garage door. Okay, so something that's important to bring up when it comes to the heart in my opinion, of what Safrax is, and that's their first piece of angle iron you're gonna be putting up. They have this angle iron, and I'm sorry I don't have it close enough, but honestly, if you're gonna be purchasing it, you'll see it. There's circles and ovals, and the ovals can go up and down and left and right, because depending on how you install the actual angle iron piece, be it this direction or this, again, it's all dependent on your garage, okay? Um, these ovals are basically the world of a difference because when you do the installation proper, you kind of have to finagle the system until it's really well set and that all of the lower posts are going to be as 90 degrees to this as possible. So the ovals are there to help you with that depending on the installation and so that's why they're there. So just know that while you're doing the installation and so that way you can do that shifting. The other thing is finding the center of where the stud is to put the lac screws is a very important detail. And they have these wonderful tools now that you can buy. This one comes particularly from Franklin Sensors, not selling them particularly. They just made it very easy in my opinion. All you do is you put it against the wall, you hit the button, and you start sliding. Then you have this little night rider thing going here, 80's reference. And what will happen is, is that you will actually see where the left, the right, and the center of the stud is. And the idea is, is that you come, you look, you mark, and then you do it again in a different spot. You come, you look, and you mark, you come, you look, and you mark. And after you do the markings, you will start seeing a line. Because I will say that it, there is a little bit of a shift, but that center line should be very obvious and that is where you know you can make the lag screw holes for you to be able to put one of these things properly. So there you have it. Again, not selling them, just saying that Franklin Sensors have made it easier than most when it comes to doing this type of searching for studs. 
The other thing I'll throw out there is for the lag screw itself. So you're working above, your hands are above you, you have this giant gnarly, you know, machine that you're trying to draw and put everything into. And these lag screws, if you don't put it inside of a magnetic uh, nut driver like I have on this one, it's a magnetic nut driver, and it falls out of your hand, you're going to have one of those ah, moments. Of course, if you're smart, you'll have other lag screws on you. But for whatever reason, safe racks, they only give you as many lag screws as it takes for you to do the installation. So you want to make sure that, yeah, you don't lose these inside of your garage. So I highly suggest the magnetic nut, uh, nut driver for these so that way you can get it done the first time right. That's it. Really, the rest of the instructions provided by Safe Racks on their manual, their online uh, 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 YouTube page, and some of the suggestions that are made by other people about Safe Racks should be able to get this all taken care of. I hope that all helps you out. And if you have questions or comments, of course, please throw them out underneath. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And then finally, what's most important is you subscribe. I don't throw out too many of these videos, but when I do, I hope that they're informative enough when you're deciding to do something. Thank you very much. I'm Chris Michaud, and have a good day.